With incredible fishing opportunities this year, anglers appreciate new and improved access to North Dakota lakes. Wesley Earl, Fisheries Project Development Supervisor, ensures those opportunities continue to be available each year. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Wesley, what do we got going on behind us here? Well, thanks, Mike, and thanks for having me on today. Um, today we're at uh, Twin Lakes, just a few miles north of Lemoore here, and uh, we're gonna be improving the access here from what we've had in the past. Back in 2009, this site was originally constructed. It was constructed with a slide-in steel, slide steel section ramp, and then, uh, so currently, with the influx of water we've had over the years, and a recent extension on our easement, we're gonna be uh, upgrading the facilities here. Wesley, explain the pour and push process here. Okay, so yeah, last year we, uh, we came into this site, um, we were awaiting permits for our ramp, so we came in a year early, um, leveled off this site with some heavy equipment, made a nice turnaround parking, parking lot area, and now this year we have those permits in hand. Um, about two weeks ago we came in with a long stick track hoe. Um, you can see from behind me here, we prepped that bed with some rock, got it to the proper slope, and then poured this 75 by 15 foot slab up above. Um, after 14 days, that slab's cured enough where we'll come in with a dozer here in a few hours, push that slab into the lake on that prepared bed, leave a few feet hanging out, dowel into that slab, pour another slab up above, that one will stay stationary. And then from there, you know, depending on the circumstance, sometimes, you know, if you're dealing with like a double lane ramp, that's a lot more weight you might have to actually do three pours and two pushes. Um, usually they always got to cure, you know, 14 days or so before we push them. And usually the process takes in that neighborhood of three to five weeks, you know, depending on weather and whatnot. And this creates better access for anglers and other people using these ramps. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely an upgrade of what we had here before. It's more of a permanent, you know, this, this ramp will be, you know, rock solid bulletproof for 35 years down the road, you know, with no issues, so. And good fishing on this lake. I'm assuming that's why we're improving the access. Yeah, this this uh, Twin Lakes has been just a walleye factory here for you know the past 10 plus years, just nonstop. Wesley, talk about the relationship with the private landowner here. Yeah, you know the private landowner is you know it's it's probably the singular most important part of the equation when building one of these. You know North Dakota is 93% privately owned, so we rely almost solely with private landowner individuals when securing these easements. You know, and it's, it's all about, you know, building that relationship throughout the process and then, you know, continue to, 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 to strengthen it as the years go by. How many of these type of ramps are, do you guys do every year? You know, depending on, you know, roughly eight to 10, depending on, you know, maybe weather, drought, water conditions, permitting. Okay, uh, where else this year? Um, so other parts of the state were hidden. Earlier this year, we were up in Horsehead Lake uh, in Kidder County, developed a site there. Um, currently, we're got a, we got this project going here at Twin. We got a reconstruction project at uh, Lake Williams and Kidder. Um, we have a large double lane ramp going on in the north basin of Alkaline Lake and Kidder. And then also we have um, a project started in Logan County at Railroad. Um, later on this summer, fall, we'll be up kind of in the northwest part of the state. We have a project on the Yellowstone where we're building a new ramp at Sundheim Park. And then just downstream of that, uh, kind of at the confluence area on the upper Missouri, there's another new site going in there too. And so there's a lot of work that goes into to, uh, planning and, and actually putting one of these ramps in. Yeah, definitely for sure. I mean, you know, the, the three to five week window that it takes to build one of these is actually probably the quickest part. You know, the part that takes the most time and sometimes is the most frustrating, you know, happens a year in advance. You know, and there's kind of five steps to getting one of these on the landscape. The first step is, you know, working with the local biologist and identifying a fishery that's going to be sustainable into the future that warrants, you know, the costs associated with developing it. Um, you know, the second part is finding a suitable site on that lake that's got, you know, proper depth, proper slope, topography up above is workable, and then also with that proximity to an existing road. Roads cost a lot to build, so we always try to find a location that's somewhat, you know, close to a road. Um, third step is, you know, probably the most important step and the hardest step is securing an easement with, with a landowner. And, uh, you know, 
that can be kind of hit or miss. You might have an awesome site, you know, perfect depth, perfect slope, topography, right next to a road, but that landowner just isn't willing to work with you. But then on the other hand, you might have a guy, a landowner that's willing to bend over backwards for you, give you whatever you need, but there's just not the depth on his lander. It might be two or three miles away from an existing road where it just doesn't work out. So the fourth step in the process is permitting. We need, you know, we need 404 permits from the Corps of Engineers. In some circumstances, we need a state water commission permit. And then also, you know, a, a clearance from the State Historical Society. Um, the, fifth, the fifth step is finding a local club entity that's willing to take on the operation and maintenance of that facility, you know, after that initial construction has taken place. How important is that? Yeah, we rely heavily on it, you know. So after this initial construction phase, you know, the local entity or the local club is kind of responsible for the upkeep of the area. So that might be, you know, mowing the grass, picking up the garbage, you know, maybe adjusting that dock as the water fluctuates throughout the season. You know, so we rely on, you know, wildlife clubs, maybe some, some park boards, um, some water boards, and just any other, you know, local entity that's willing to take on those responsibilities. And one thing we've kind of noticed here in the past, I don't know, let's say decade or so is, you know, these clubs, the average age of these clubs is, you know, retirement age or older. And a lot of these guys, you know, are starting to have health problems or they just can't do what they used to do. So what we're seeing is a lot of these small town clubs disbanding and, you know, disappearing off, off the landscape. And one thing as an agency that we're concerned about is, you know, who are we gonna find going forward to help us out, you know, take care of all these facilities we're putting out there. Wesley, this isn't the only thing your crew is doing this at this time of year. What else, what else do you guys do? Yeah, so we cover the whole state, you know, corner to corner and everything in between, you know, that encompasses, you know, like 450 fisheries right now, 400 ramps, 160 piers, 400 docks. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things in between, you know, just the construction of these new sites that we, that we're responsible for, you know, in the, in the winter months, you know, we're building 15 to 20 new docks and piers that get distributed out in the spring. You know, some go to these new sites and then some go to older sites that, you know, that dock is deteriorated and just needs to be upgraded. Um, you know, you're always coming back to these sites, you know, armor plating them with some riprap from the wind and the erosion over the years, or, you know, touching them up with some gravel from potholes or ruts and whatnot. Um, other things we, we, we do are construction and reconstruction of fish clean stations throughout the state, um, signing, you know, boat directional signing, and then also regulation signing. And then, you know, some vault toilet maintenance and, and, and also just some fencing, you know, a lot of these sites are in cattle pastures and we just gotta kind of fence them out to keep the cattle out of the, out of the ramp area itself. So Wesley, when you guys leave here after all being finished with this ramp, what's that mean for anglers? It just improved access. I mean, a lot more parking, just a lot more user friendly than what we've had in the past here. They'll have access to a fishery that's been, you know, just unbelievable throughout the years and just keeps producing fish year after year. A lot of great information, Wesley. Thank you. Thank you, Mike.